Oh, hello everyone. I'm very happy to be here and thank you Alma, Professor Pregni for this opportunity. So today I'm going to present to you my small study entitled Knowledge Gaps and Future Directions of Mendelian Randomization Studies in Cardiology a Scoping Review. So we are all aware that uh, confounders are an important source of bias for observational studies. And even with the most advanced statistical methods, there is still uh, an important bias left that always happens or it's commonly present in observational studies. And unmeasured confounders especially can affect the outcome and they are not solved with most of the statistical methods that we use. And this is especially important in cardiovascular risk factors because they often have long-term effects, they are hard to characterize and require sometimes significant resources to analyze because they tend to be very long-term. And usually there are many scenarios that we need observational studies that there is no way we can do just an RCT to test if an exposure is damaging or if a long-term exposure is correlated with something else. So we, there is a need to do to use observational studies to analyze and to, to interpret and to gather more information about that disease, but there is still some bias in the way we can elaborate them or we can analyze them. And Mendelian randomization studies is a new design that tries to overcome the classic limitations of these designs. So what happens is that the idea is you randomize, instead of randomizing in a randomized control trial, you use a randomization done by nature. So when we just are in the early stages of life, we have a normal Mendelian randomization in, we, in which we receive one of allele, one allele of a gene of many of thousands of genes of, and one set of people will also receive one different allele from that same gene. So we are just using the nature randomization instead of doing ours in a randomized control trial, and then just testing uh, what happens to the outcomes. So that's how we create two groups just by doing this randomization. Obviously, this is a type of study that requires a lot of characterization of the population, but because this is done more and more recently, then these studies have become more and more relevant. But we are not sure when, where we are standing in cardiology. So that's why that's the goal of the review, because there have been no reviews assessing the current tendencies or the evidence is validated with this type of the study in cardiology. So the method was to define specific categories in the broad cardiology research that is really big. So I. I use the European Society of Cardiology guidelines to, est to establish different categories. So I can, so I later add the, added each specific study to each category and then see where are the gaps where, and where do we have a lot of studies and when, and where are we currently missing some of these studies. And because of, I wanted to try to assess a lot of the, all the Mendelian randomization studies done in cardiology, I use a broad search strategy but I also I I uh, use PubMed solely instead of using Web of Science because I thought that many of the Mendelian randomization studies are published in very high impact journals. So I assume PubMed will have most of them. And later on, I register each study depending on the outcome or the intervention assessed with the Mendelian randomization. And finally, time filter I apply time filters and review filters to just focus on the Mendelian randomization and lefting out other types of reviews or, um, or articles that evaluated Mendelian randomization in other areas of medicine instead of cardiology. So at first I got 254 articles and then after filtering and screening them, I analyzed 136 articles. Uh, the main reason for taking out the articles were because they were duplicates or they were not assessing cardiology research uh, outcomes. So what I found was the current Mendelian randomization studies have become really increasingly more common. You can see here in the graph that in 2022, over 40 people, over 40 studies were published in Mendelian random, of Mendelian randomization in cardiology. And this has been constantly increasing ac across the last few years. And just in 2012, we didn't have not a single Mendelian randomization. And in 2022, we have over 40 just in this year at the time I made the review. And of the different categories, the overall cardiovascular disease was the most studied one. 
but also it was interesting that, for example, coronary disease and atrial fibrillation were one of the most studies, were one of the most studied categories and heart failure. But there were some very interesting results, for example, in hypertension and in valvular disease, that in cardiology, the risk factors for this disease are very important because they are the ones we target during the routine primary care. So validating this, uh, these risk factors using Medea randomization studies will be really important. And in the future, there will be likely Medea randomization studies assessing uh, category, categories that don't even have one right now. For example, um, uh, pulmonary embolism, there have now been Medea randomization studies assessing the different alleles that could impact the disease that is very common. And uh, pulmonary heart hypertension that is also being uh, constantly doing research. There has not been uh, doing MR studies recently, and we will likely see them in the future. So the main conclusion is that MR studies are becoming increasingly more common in cardiology research and are a powerful tool to find and validate associations. And also many important MR studies have been published. There, ha there is still yet to be validated some of these uh, some of the classic risk factors of many of these areas in cardiology in the upcoming years.